Hello everyone, we're delighted to have you here with us for this new Berta video. Today, we will be presenting the Model 2C from the number 2 issue of Berta Easy from March to April 2023. Together, we will make this long-sleeved top. It's a nice basic with a classic front and a pretty pleat at the back. Plus, this piece is quick and easy to make. And while it is super chic, it is still really soft and comfortable thanks to this purple organic cotton jersey, which is the same one as that in the magazine and comes from the website of our partner C. Polly, who is specialized in GOTS certified fabric. When it comes to supplies, you will need matching thread, basting thread, pins, a twin needle, a special jersey needle for your sewing machine, sewing scissors, a tape measure, a chalk or pencil, a pen, a ruler, a tracing wheel, and Berta carbon paper. And don't forget to take your measurements and compare them with those in the chart in your magazine. This will help you determine the best fit for you. Now cut out or transfer pieces 1 to 6 from the pattern sheet number 2 and place them on the fabric according to the cutting layout. Transfer the outline of the pieces, then add the allowances and notches found in the instructions for your model. I'm using a tracing wheel and carbon paper to transfer all the lines and notches to the opposite side of the fabric. Before I remove the pins from my cut pieces, I carefully place the paper underneath the fabric and run the tracing wheel along the pattern lines and over the notches. You can find more details in the instructions of your carbon paper. The pieces will always be stitched together with the right side of the fabric inward, and unless otherwise specified, all seams will be secured with a back stitch. It is also a good idea to mark the different lines of the pattern with basting thread or chalk. I start with the back and the piece for the pleat. I place one back piece over the other, right sides together, pin them along the middle back line, and stitch large stitches on this line. I press the seams open, place the pleat piece on the middle back seam, and pin the back pleat edges and the pleat piece. I don't pin the back, just its edges. I stitch starting from notch 1, trim the allowances to 7mm, neaten them together, and press the seams. Second step, the back yoke. I pin the top edge of the pleat piece onto the back, you can baste if you'd like, and then I remove the thread that was stitched with long stitches along the middle back. I place the bottom edge of the yoke on the top edge of the back, right sides together, pin the allowances, and stitch starting from notch 2. I neaten the edges together and press the seam toward the yoke. Step 3. The front darts and the shoulders. I place the dart lines on top of each other, pin them, Stitch along this line, and then I knot the threads together at the tip by hand or with a button on my sewing machine. I press the darts downward again. Then I place the front shoulders on top of the back shoulders, right sides together, pin the allowances, and a stitch starting from notch 3. I neaten the edges and press the seam open. Now the fourth step, the neckline edging. I fold the edging in half widthwise, right sides together, and pin the short sides. I mark the middle front of the edging at the fold with a pin, and then I place pins on the middle back and middle front of the neckline. I stitch the short sides of the edging and press the seams open. I fold the edging in half lengthwise, wrong sides together, Press and place the allowances on the neckline of the top, right sides together. I pin everything, making sure the middle of the edging and neckline matches up. The seam of the edging will be on the middle back. I gather the allowances with a zigzag stitch, gently pulling on the edging as I do so. I trim the allowances to 7mm and press the seam toward the top. The fifth step, the sides and sleeves. 
I place the front and the back right sides together. Then I pin the side edges. I gather the allowances starting from notch four, neaten the edges and press the seam open. I now fold the sleeve in half right sides together, pin the allowances and a stitch starting from notch five. I neaten the allowances together and press the seam to one side. Second to last step, the armhole. I put the sleeve head and the armhole of the top right sides together and pin the allowances, making sure that the sleeve seam matches up with the shirt seam. That notch six of the sleeve and armhole match up and that the shoulder seam matches up with the sleeve head. I gather the allowances as I hold onto the sleeve head between the stitches indicated in the instructions. I trim the allowances, neaten them together, and press the seam toward the sleeve. And the final step, hemming and top stitching the neckline. I neaten the hem and sleeve allowances, Fold them toward the wrong side of the fabric as I press, and a stitch on the right side with a twin needle 1.2 centimeters from the edge. I also top stitch the neckline seam with the twin needle as I hold onto the allowances. And now the top is finished. This piece can be sewn many times over because you can never have too many tops in your wardrobe. You can also change the style and shape by creating one of our other versions. And if you are feeling particularly bold, you can shorten the sleeves for a great summer t-shirt. As a reminder, all our Broda Easy patterns are available in sizes 34 to 44. You'll find our second tutorial for the 4A dress, which is also from this number two issue of Broda Easy on our channel. Don't forget to send us your comments and creations and exchange with other sewers on our social networks. And I'll see you very soon for a new model. Berta would like to thank and recommend its partner, C. Pauly. Thank you for following us and see you soon for a new tutorial.